Be part of the David Burns Show. Text 8133 and start your message with RH. Email burnsy at bbc.co.uk. Call Grimsby 340-959 or Hull 225959. Uh, we're going to kick it off talking about whether we're doing enough for our uh, f- former uh, veterans, soldiers, um, and whatever um, this morning. The, the, the reason being there was a front-page story on the front of uh, the Hull Daily Mail on Saturday uh, that I spotted. And I thought, oh, that, that's, that's going to touch a lot of people. And... Um, Subsequently, I've seen the Mirror reporting it and I've seen the Independent reporting it as well. Uh, so let's find out uh, about this. This is all to do with a, a Hull's forgotten soldier, Chris Ashton. Um, the journalist who wrote the story uh, for the Hull Daily Mail is Elizabeth Mackley. She's on the Burnsy Show this morning. Elizabeth, thank you very much for your time this morning. V- very touching story. For those who might not have read it across northern Lincolnshire and East Yorkshire, just uh, paint the picture for us here. So, um, good morning. Good morning. Um, so, about ten years ago, I think it was in two thousand and six. Um, this this young this young guy, this Chris Ashton, he was he was serving in Iraq with the, with the Black Watch, with the Royal Logistics Corps, and um, he um, ended up in an accident and he took a grenade to the right side of his face, so he um, ended up losing losing an eye. And he needed to have his um, skull restructured. And over the years, and it was it was it was horrible. And um, it's because um, of, he had strokes on the table as well he ended up paralyzed down down his left side so unable to uh, unable to walk and unable to sort of um, have that independence that he had and um, after years and years of rehabilitation he he managed to get himself back to his feet with the help of his carers uh, Julian Dennis and Zoe Naylor mm-hmm. and then um, the reason we picked up on it recently is we heard he was again back in hospital and doing those seven years of hard rehabilitation work um, because Dr. Stan fluid in his brain, which left him, you know, after he, it was a huge resilience. He had to uh, determination and drive to sort of do that rehabilitation process. And um, they were telling me when I spoke to them last week about just how much hard work it had taken to do that. Um, but again, being back in hospital, he had essentially lost all hope because because he wasn't able to walk again, he wasn't able to talk again, and he was right back where he really didn't want to be. Um, and that's that's when we got in touch and um, and decided that we wanted to run something on on his story. Because mm. his, his his friends, you're, you're telling us, fear that he's lost the will to live. Yeah, that's right. Because it was because again, when he was he he loved the army. He was a lance corporal in the army, and um, that's what that's what he lived for. And it was. It, you know that that's what he that's what he did and um huge amount of independence and you know fighting for for his country and for other people and to have all that taken away it was bad enough when he returned to the uk all those years ago and um it was in a worse state back then but being back in hospital again he he'd almost pretty much given up and um uh julian told me this heartbreaking story of um just a couple of weeks ago when um, he turned, Chris turned to, to, to um, Julian and said, um, um, he can't talk, so he was um, indicating, but essentially held, held him out the, the lead, sort of saying to disconnect him from, from the machines because he'd had enough. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just, it's just heartbreaking what's been happening to him. So, so, so his friends have asked you to, to, to help and, and get him messages from, from people, and it's really taken off, hasn't it, Elizabeth? It's been overwhelming. I mean, we, we thought that we'd have, we, we knew it would touch a lot of hearts and um, inspire a lot of people, but we didn't really anticipate just how much, um, just just the extent of, of the response. If it's, if it's any indication, my, I put my email address at the bottom of, of the story saying, if you want to get in touch with the message of support, then, then do so. And we expected lots on, on Facebook and social media, and I was aware it's being shared everywhere. But over the course of the weekend, to my personal um, work email address, I've had more than 100 individual emails sort of um, saying, giving messages and again they've, they've been all um heartbreaking themselves we've had sort of military wives we've had families we've had people who've lost somebody to the armed forces as well as as well as um a huge response from the people of Hull themselves mm-hmm. and we've had um people from as far away as i've had there was a u.s marine who emailed in veterans all the way from australia it's just gone it's it's just it's incredible the amount of support that's that's come in and support of him and i i know the in, both the independent and the mirror certainly online were running the story had, had, had picked up on it yeah have you spotted that 
Yes, it's um, it has been picked up nationally, and I think that was, I think that's um, it was, was I think it was a huge. I mean, it wasn't surprising necessarily to the worst, but it was a huge surprise to the family, who again, who've just been um, in a many, in many respects inundated with with all these measures of support for Chris. And from what I understand, it's um, he when he first saw our front page, he was. And smiling and very happy, and I think I think it ha- is doing the trick and perking his spirits up. I think it's all the more important that we do um, raise awareness of what's what's going on and um, continue to sort of fight for him. I think there's a risk that sometimes we do forget about our soldiers, and that's that's not a good thing by no. any stretch of. Where can people read more uh, and, and and maybe want to leave a message, Elizabeth? What's the best way people can do it? They can. I mean, I'm I'm compiling and collating all the messages for Chris my, myself to give to him when I'm hopefully I see him in the next couple of weeks or so. So they're very welcome to send um, um, emails directly through to me, and I shall I can make sure that um, he receives them. Okay. What's your what's what's your email address if you don't if you don't mind giving it out? Yeah, yeah. It's Elizabeth dot Mackley, which is Elizabeth E L I Z A B E T H dot Mackley, which is M A C K L E Y at holdanymail.co.uk Thank you very much for coming on the show it's, I, I, I knew when I saw it I thought this will this will touch a lot of hearts and um, mm. people will, will, will have feelings about this. Uh, you're doing a good thing appreciate thank you coming you. on the show this morning Thank you, thank you for having me. That's quite alright there you go, Elizabeth Mackley from the Whole Daily Mail there, you can read more online uh, on their website about the, uh, the story of Help Hull's Forgotten Soldier Chris Ashton who friends fear is losing the will to live, and Elizabeth is uh, collating uh, all these messages, and um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I I thought we should reflect that this morning because it touched me when I read it, and I do wonder: Are we doing um, enough? Uh, Paul Matson at Hull for Hero says, "Bernsey, I went into a, a, Her Majesty's prison, Humber, two weeks ago. They have fifty-five veterans in prison that they know of." and reckon there are another 30 who won't admit it or have fallen through the net. 85 of our war heroes in one prison. How many prisons in the country are the same? Why, in my opinion, there are hundreds of veterans that need our help in Hull, says Paul Matson uh, from Hull for Heroes. If you have any thoughts on that, uh, do let me know this morning. If you want to share your story or a member of your family's story or um, you, you just want to pass on a message, well, pass on, because it's, you know, Elizabeth has, has, has done the work on this story and everything like that, but I just thought it, it, it felt right to highlight it this morning. Anything else you want to talk about, as always, then the numbers are these. Get in touch with The David Burns Show. Text 81333 and start your message with RH. Email burnsy at bbc.co.uk. Call Grimsby 340959 or Hull 225959. Uh, let's talk to Derek Hardman, who is uh, founder of Hull's Hull Veterans Breakfast Club uh, on the Burnsy Show this morning. Derek, thank you very much for your time this morning. Morning to you. Is, is Chris's story a, a, a typical one? Uh, typical. That's a good question, because there isn't a lot of information out there to say whether it's typical or not, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, I imagine that every city's got a Chris in it somewhere. Yes. Uh, especially the amount of casualties that came back from Afghanistan. Um, so, so I imagine there'll be a fair number of Chrises kicking about. Chris is a, uh, you know, sort of a, a, an example of the sort of guy that goes out, puts his neck on the line for his country and uh, ends up paying a price that for the rest of his life. I mean, at the moment he's in the press, but, you know, a month's time, two months' time, when this blows over, Chris will still be paying that price. Mm. But, so. but but soldiers, uh, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, except that might that might be the price they have to pay, don't they? Yeah, I understand that. I understand that that, might, that may be the price they have to pay, but uh, don't, don't get me wrong, when this story hit the press sort of thing, the, uh, Chris, Chris wasn't you know, making some sort of plea for any recognition or anything. No, it was his friends, wasn't it? it well, it, uh, basically, I got involved because jo- Chris joined the Breakfast Club. It was sort of the back end of last year, and uh, we've been trying to get him down there. Obviously, he's 
he's got a, he's paralysed down his left side because of the right side brain injury, mm-hmm. uh, and and he and he kept having relapses and wasn't able to go because of his his you know his injuries. Uh, he kept getting infections in the metal work he's got in his head and stuff, and. Um, you know, I wanted to introduce him to the Breakfast Club and, and for people to get to know him, you know, for th- themselves rather than me tell them about him. Mm-hmm. And um, he was just never able to go because of his, his illnesses. Well, this last one, uh, well, to be fair, he was lucky to be he was lucky to be alive in the first place. The injury, he had. yes, indeed, yeah. But he was lucky to, fi- to survive this recent illness that they, they induced a coma to, to prevent him from having a heart attack because of the infection that was in the the fluid around his brain, down his spinal cord, uh, uh, and it was touch and go for a while. So, uh, and he's and it set him back years. He, he was sort of uh, getting some movement, a little bit of movement back, and on the side that was that's paralysed. He he was, he, he, he was able to feed himself and you know talk and everything. And uh, now he's he's got to relearn to speak. You know so. He's got another long road in front of him. Mm. It never seems to end for Chris, to be honest. I, I, I can imagine that. As a general principle, how, are we doing enough to, to, to look after? You see, this, is, this, is, this comes back to this point when you say that soldiers accept this risk. They accept a risk, a personal risk, but, uh, and, and they accept the fact that this sort of thing can happen. You know, we, we all signed on the dotted line to say that you know, uh, uh, we, we basically signed a check up, up to include our own lives. Yeah. But uh, when you come back to to back home, you, you basically don't expect to be forgotten. You know, it, it's not like you don't you don't expect people to go out of the way to you know uh, to to you know lavish you with riches, etc. But you don't ex- you also don't expect that if you come back with an injury such as this, that you know he was basically. Uh, left to his own devices, sort of thing. But you know, but but, he, but he, in in fairness to the authorities, and I'll, 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 I'll get to a point in a minute. He has had uh, a lot of surgery and and presumably a, a a lot of support. But he he just personally feels that this setback, reading the story, has taken him to the to the brink of where he feels he hasn't gone on. The, yep. the, 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 Correct me if I'm wrong. There feels to be a lot of public support because Help for the Heroes and everything like that yep. has shown a great deal of of support. What yep. what I'm asking is, do the government show enough support? They've they've obviously paid for people's operations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but yep. are they doing enough, Derek? Are they doing enough? Right. Well, the fact is that we still have five percent of the prison population are, are ex servicemen. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason for that because of the, the the mental issues that they come back with. The injuries are always visible, like yes. they are with Chris. Yeah, I accept uh, that. Uh, we we have a, a, a high percent. Nobody really knows the percentage. But we have a high percentage of guys that are uh, homeless. Uh, that that shouldn't be occurring. That sh- that should never be allowed to happen. Uh, obviously, there are a very, very small number of them uh, uh, probably prefer it like that because they 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 don't they feel that you know they they can't take handouts if you like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, that sh- that shouldn't be the case. It's not a handout. They've 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 you know all of them uh, 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 pay a price. You know they, they they sign up for a job. There is no job in the world where you actually you know other than that put your put your actual life on the line for the you know it's 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 not a job of work it's a it's a vocation it's mm-hmm. you know there is no other job like it so you know when they come back and 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 they have these injuries whether they be visible or invisible um it, it, it that needs to be that needs to be looked at that needs these guys that in prisons need to be uh, looked after so that they, they they don't end up there you know they, yeah but uh, paul paul matson sent, sent me a text this morning Yep. Uh, and from Hull for Heroes. I went in uh, HMP Humber two weeks ago. They have 55 veterans in prison that they know of and mm. reckon there are another 30 who won't mm. admit it or have fallen yep. through the net. Yep. Do you think that's fairly typical? Yeah. Well, it seems to be. You know, it, that's that's the, the sort of stuff that I've read. That's, that seems to be typical. It, the, the, the issue is, guys... Like myself, I joined straight from school, so you've you've gone for a, for a, from a uh, an environment where 
uh, you have a schedule, you have a uniform, school uniform, you go to school, you, you have a roof over your head, all your bills mm -hmm. are paid, etc., etc. Anybody that doesn't join the military, uh, they, you know, leave school, they get a job, parents are there to sort of assist them to become more in independent, they get their own place, they learn how to pay bills, gas, water, electric, rent, whatever they have to pay, mm -hmm. uh, and, and piecemeal, they become independent and have their own pl place, you know, in society and go on and live their lives. The military, like guys like myself, you go straight from school at 17, uh, join the military, you go from wearing a uniform and a schedule and everything else uh, into a system that uh, where you wear a uniform and you follow a schedule and you uh, the roof is over your head and all mm -hmm. your bills are paid. So when you come out as an adult 10, 15, 20 years later and walk out that gate, you go from having, in effect, 1,500 brothers uh, to have it to being completely isolated. That's when you, the mental issues kick in. And you go back to a completely alien world. Uh, oh, I've got to find somewhere to live. I've got to find a job. Uh, how do I pay rent? Who do I pay rent to? How do I pay council tax? How do I pay my gas, my water, electric, all these things? All these people are wanting money from me. Uh, when, uh, many of the guys that left, resettlement is a lot better now, but when the, my generation, when guys left, we got given the name of an ex-officer mm -hmm. in some barracks that you went to and he gave you a list of jobs with people that was, had empathy towards ex-servicemen, which was very few at the time. So, you know, he was kind of left to your own devices. The military condition you to be a serviceman, but they do not recondition you to be a civilian. And mm -hmm. that's the problem. And has that changed in any way, Derek? Is that being addressed? The, 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 the resettlement is a lot better than it used to be. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the simple fact that we've gone from one breakfast club in Hull, in, inside of 19 months we've gone to 112 breakfast clubs with going on for 10,000 members, and it's growing daily, where guys are getting together, they, they, they understand the language that each other talking, they're networking, they're assisting each other. Guys that that have already tread, trodden that, that difficult road from the military to civilian life. Uh, now, now say we get in service leavers now, coming to the breakfast clubs because they can, they can draw on that experience. They can get guided and helped. That, that sort of, uh, that system, if you like, is sadly lacking, where you can, you can actually talk to people that, are, that have, have done this, that have already made the transition from service life into civilian life. So, I believe that that's I believe that's the reason that the breakfast clubs have, have have grown so massively. It's become a phenomenon in the last nineteen months. Derek, if if there's people listening this morning uh, who would like to help, or maybe they're thinking, actually, I'm, I'm a former veteran myself, I'd like to go to the breakfast club. How do they go about it, Derek? Well, uh, our our breakfast club in Hull meets uh, um, um, Pete Barker, motor engineers on Sutton Fields, Unit One B on on uh, Kingston Way every Saturday morning from about 9.15 onwards. So they can simply turn up there on a Saturday morning because it, it, it's not a charity, there's no fees, there's no registration. They just simply turn up and they'll be welcomed as a service, an ex-service person. Or indeed, we have serving personnel turn up when they're home on leave, etc. Uh, you know, uh, you, you basically pay for your breakfast and enjoy the banter and start to network and, you, you know, uh, join in that sort of social circle and... That's that. The, 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 no problem doing that. If they, if people use Facebook, you just have to put in a search for, for breakfast club, and you'll get you'll get a hundred and six of them will come up at the moment. Uh, six more waiting to come online. Uh, you pick the nearest one to you and apply to join it. Basically, Derek, uh, thank you for coming on the show this morning. All the best to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Appreciate your time. What do you think of what you're hearing this morning? Our Grimsby number is oh one four seven two three four oh nine five nine. Our whole number is 01482225959. Only cost you the initial phone call. We'll ring you back. Um, you can text the show, 81333, start your message RH. That will standard message rates will apply. And you can email for free, uh, burnsy at bbc.co.uk. And you can tweet for free at BBC Burnsy.